Hey guys, Daryl High, um, State Youth Director for Alabama High School Team Trail. I have uh, Gene Gillow here, our National Conservation Director. We want to discuss things. We're down here at Ufala, Barber County, with the Fast Monster Elite Series. And uh, Gene monitors all his care aspects for the tournament all four days. Uh, he does everything from monitoring temperature, live release boat, he monitors, he puts, I leave probably 200 bags of ice out there in a day, sanitizing bags. He's got best practices for trails all over the country to utilize going forward during this pandemic. And uh, he's going to discuss things that do with habitat, AFCO grants, Alabama power, and other news that's that's uh, important for everyone to know in PPE, safety, social distancing, why this is important to follow these guidelines. Um, you know, during this day and going forward. Uh, and so I'm going to hand it over to Gene and let him discuss some of these things and we'll take questions toward the end. Gene. You know, this, this is kind of a weird time. Uh, we're sitting here with our, with our butt pulled up, our face mask on. It's a little different kind of uh, situation for a typical tournament play-in, but that's the, the world we live in right now. And it's, uh, it's just part of what we've got to do. Uh, of course, being this close to each other, we are wearing our face masks uh, on our butt. Uh, normally, uh, the rest of the program we've got set up for all of our tournaments now is to maintain that social distancing. And one of the things that we've done in, in uh, trying to do that, to keep the anglers separated, uh, we've, we've got the same number of waiting line tanks set up that we always do, but we only have one angler per tank. So they're staying six feet apart. And as the anglers bring their fish up uh, after they get a, a weigh-in bag, We've got a bunch of other steps that we've had to add because of uh, not just the social distancing, we try to disinfect the bag to make sure anything that anybody touches uh, doesn't transmit anything to somebody else. I'm trying to protect myself. He's trying to protect himself. We're protecting each other. And that's kind of the plan that we've got put in place. So I'll just go through real quick what the, what the anglers are doing. When they get a, a weigh-in bag, that bag has already been disinfected. What we're using to do that with is hydrogen peroxide. It's the only disinfectant you can put on the bag that doesn't harm the fish. Clorox, or bleach, or any of those kind of other antiseptics can be dangerous to the fish. So we decided hydrogen peroxide is a pretty good substitute. It is approved by the CDC for disinfecting. So we dip all of our bags make sure that they're clean before we hand them to the anchor. They take it down, they get their fish in the bag, they bring the bags back and they set them in a sink. And our people don't, don't touch those, uh, touch the bags again. The anchors pull their fish out. We use a, a two bag system, uh, the mesh bag inside. And the anglers carry their fish in that mesh bag up here to the waiting line tank. They move through the tanks until they get to a sink where we've got a guy, the, the bump sink, we call it, where the fish are checked for live and dead and they're measured for length. Well, instead of handing the, the, the waymaster that bag of fish, they simply pour the fish into the sink, hold their bag in a, uh, open in another sink right next to it. The waymaster checks the fish, puts them in the bag, the angler takes his bag of fish that he's never actually let go of, gets back in line, waiting to go up on stage. And when he gets up on stage, it's a little different up there too. We've got Dave Mercer over on one side of the stage with a microphone. Trip Weldon, our waymaster, the tournament director, is in the middle. And the anglers are staying off to the side. Everybody's doing that social distancing thing. So they bring their bag of fish up, they set it in a sink and step away. Then Tripp picks up that bag of fish, puts it on the scale, weighs it, sets it back in that sink. The angler then picks the bag up, 
takes it off stage. The other thing that's a little different now is that we don't have a bunch of volunteers backstage, which typically has been a lot of the high school kids in previous years, hauling that bag of fish back to the release boat. Now the anglers are actually carrying their fish to the release boat. When they get to the release boat, they're not handing their bag of fish to one of our people on the boat. So we're not transferring anything. They simply dump their fish into a basket that our guys are holding on the boat. The fish go into the release boat and ultimately get turned loose. The angler then brings his bag back up to the disinfecting station where he drops his bag in a tank that's got hydrogen peroxide in it. And we start that process over. So it's taken a little bit longer. It certainly stretches things out uh, from the, the, the distance standpoint. Uh, but you know, it's really gone pretty smoothly. And, and overall, with, uh, with an 86 anger field, it hasn't really stretched the length of the way out, out that much. Uh, the pace has been pretty good. And, uh, and we've gotten everything going. You know, each day we kind of fine tune it a little bit. But a lot of the things that we're doing would be very easily applied to any, any tournament, whether it's a, a small club tournament, or a state or a regional event. We're gonna be doing the same thing next week in Oklahoma at one of our Bassmaster Open. So I think these these best practices that we're coming up with are something that anybody can come up with. Uh, you know, they may have to fine tune it a little bit to work in their situation. But overall, I think it would be pretty easy to adapt a lot of this at home in the tournament. Just make sure you're maintaining your distancing, you're disinfecting, protecting your people, you're protecting the anglers, and certainly protecting the public. And that's one of the big things that we're doing. You know, all of our folks, if you look around our venue, everybody's got their masks on. And that's, a lot of that is so that, you know, when the public sees what we're doing, they understand we're trying to protect ourselves, and we're trying to protect the public. But, yeah, um, and from a high school standpoint, I'm I'm always getting things advice and, and you know stating that this would work. And we've had one tournament in Scottsboro, and we utilize the best practices that he presented us with. And a lot of these um, the merch of the bag, like we do out here, the ice, having the flights come in, and Chris, you were there doing that event as well, mm -hmm. and uh, it went pretty good. We we had the lines marked six foot apart. They have cones out here where the pros stand up. I think I've learned things being down here, helping the guys and other things, so coordinating so with the camera yeah. crews and everything. To when we go to Lay Lake next week, we'll utilize some of those at that venue as well. Uh, Gene, you want to talk some about uh, Alabama Power or that? Yeah, there's several things that uh, have been going on here in Alabama that the past has been involved with. One of them is uh, Alabama Power is one of our sponsors. I don't either. And as part of that sponsorship, they have provided some money uh, the last three years that we put into a pot to help build a way in pavilion at the dam at Smith Lake right. on, the, on the Jasper side of Smith Lake. And they put that uh, that money in. I mean, we've got volunteers from a group called the Union Sportsman's Alliance that actually helped build that structure. These are, these are union members that are all sorts of trades. They do concrete work, electrical work, uh, steel framing, roofing, uh, all of the things that you need to build something. These guys volunteered their time and helped build that facility and Alabama Power funding paid for the material. And it is almost finished. We've got to put a sign up that recognizes all the parking. But uh, very soon that pavilion will be available for tournament groups to use there at the place. Uh, it's a nice big 20 by 40 pavilion with a big concrete apron out in front of it. Park a big weigh-in trailer on. Uh, it, it'll be wired so there'll be plenty of power. 
uh, it's going to be a pretty nice little facility. And at the same time, Alabama DCNR was renovating the Boca and the courtesy docks. So there's been a lot of upgrades to the whole whole facility there at, at the dam there at Smith Lake uh, that, that are going to be very tournament friendly. So uh, Alabama Power has been a really good uh, really good partner with us. You know, they helped build that uh, way and complete beeswax uh, on Lay Lake a few years ago. And this is another one. Now, they also are, are looking now, uh, over the next year or so, to do some habitat work uh, that, that could potentially involve some of the high school teams down in the Mobile area. They are, uh, even though there's not an Alabama Power Lake there, that's part of their service area where they deliver power. And so they're looking at trying to work with the uh, Corps of Engineers and uh, the other people that actually own the water to do some habitat enhancement, uh, some brush pile type projects. So kind of stay tuned for that. If, if that uh, develops over the next several months, we'll be getting with you guys and see if we can get some helpers on that project. And we got we got another habitat project that's going to be going on, we hope, right here on Lake Eupala. The Corps of Engineers is going to be applying for a grant uh, to do some habitat, some brush pile sinking here on Lake Eupala. Now, these aren't slam dunk deals. They don't have the money in hand yet. They're still in the process of putting together a proposal that they will submit to uh, a group called Friends of Reservoir. And this is potentially about a $30,000 grant that they're all getting uh, to do a lot of habitat work here on Eupala. Now, if they're competitive enough and they are awarded that grant, then one of the things they're going to need is lots of help. And that's where we're going to be depending on, on the Bass Nation, uh, both the high school and the adult club to help out with some of these projects. But we'll keep everybody plugged in on those as, as they develop. And uh, hopefully over the next several months, we'll have some good news on those fronts. Outstanding. Well, Dale, we appreciate everything you do in Bass as, as a national organization uh, trying to get us back. Uh, from my standpoint, I know the pros have been waiting to get back out on the road. And they are following all the guidelines. We have a great staff at the high school level, uh, and we're going to follow suit. We're going to talk to, you know, we've got John Black down in uh, Mobile and Jeffrey McCord here in follow and all the directors will get involved with these projects and uh, we'll help any way we can because Habitat, I think the kids love to get involved with that. We're going to have a late cleanup project uh, here Saturday morning. we got five high schools that Gene's going to coordinate with and myself. Gene's going to, we do it, we did it last year, they do it all over the country, and uh, it's just giving back, the, the, the youth will be learning how we, you know, keep the trash off the water, keep the trash in the boat, and don't live in these lakes, because uh, fish care, these waterways, uh, uh, reservoirs need uh, full-time uh, projects like this. Always, but uh, anyway, Chris, I'll be sending you some pictures along with uh, you think, awesome. Gene. Yeah, we, we we really appreciate all the help. I mean, uh, uh, awesome. You know, we depend a lot on on the Bass Nation volunteers. And the high school teams have been really great about stepping up and helping out. This, uh, this cleanup we're doing tomorrow, we call it the Bass Nation Cleanup Challenge. And you know, this actually kind of started right here in Alabama. We, we did a cleanup at Gunnersville last year. And we decided, well, let's do another one a couple of weeks later at Chickamauga. And the Tennessee youth director said, challenge accepted. And that's kind of where we started out. We said, okay, let's, let's make a deal out of this. And we, we take this thing around the country to uh, different venues, you know, we'll, we'll get these kids involved and say, hey, can you pick up more trash than the kids did at this lake or that lake somewhere in another state? 
and we try to make a little rivalry out of it. We've got AFCO and Cook for both sponsoring the next event. Uh, so we really appreciate the corporate sponsors here and help it out. But, uh, uh, it doesn't work until, unless we get the kids out to the kicking up track. Thank you for, for helping coordinate all that. It's really been great to get all these kids involved. Yes, uh, and Jeff and McCord, again, big part of that, helping uh, with the Headland and the Hobart, uh, and Nine Mile, uh, Harris County, Georgia, uh, Lakeside, and Vine Chapel, and Lakeside. And guys, we'll be here again, wear your jerseys some, at some point, pick us up on stage, and Gene will. Uh, have instructions on your gloves and cuts and all that stuff. But uh, again, Chris, uh, appreciate it. And uh, again, appreciate Gene and all that Bass has done and, and from his conservation side and stuff for uh, the summer uh, swing. Because uh, it's going to get hot and uh, it's going to get hotter when we move into July with some of these parents. They're headed to New York.